Tom Scott. That's the name of the guy in the video the other day that I couldn't remember his name on YouTube. The British guy with the blonde hair. I was talking about him in this video about the, the world's shortest river and how um, the definition of river can be, you know, different depending on who you ask. Um, but I just watched a video of his on copyright laws, which was a great video. It was very informative, you know, and he, he talked for, you know, factual stuff and basically how, how screwed up the copyright laws are. On. And I just figured I'd talk about it, you know, since I talk about uh, free and open source software, obviously copyrights are uh, an important aspect there. And I am not against copyrights. I think copyrights are extremely important. I love licenses like the GPL, and without a copyright, I couldn't release my software under the GPL because to license something, you have to have a copyright on it. And, you know, for the last 30 or 40 years, some years, you know, you draw something. I draw a smiley face on a piece of paper. I have a copyright on it immediately, and you can't make copies of that. And that is important. Again, I write a piece of software. I don't want to have to go through, you know, legal means and paying fees and stuff to get a copyright on it so that I can write, release it under the GPL. If I don't have a license on it, then someone could take that and close the source and, and do something else with it. So copyrights are very important, but our copyright laws are very, very screwed up. And, and there are a lot of areas that I don't have answers for. There are some aspects of it that there aren't good answers. Um, but I don't think anybody should get in trouble for watching a movie or listening to a song or looking at a picture. Uh, you know, I live in America. We're supposed to have freedom of speech. I know some people might say that we don't truly have freedom of speech. Uh, that's a debatable thing. But to say we have freedom of speech, but I can get in trouble for listening to something? I can get in trouble for... I, I can say whatever I want, as long as it's not like a clear and present danger, but I can't listen to a song because it has a copyright and I have to pay to listen to it? That's ridiculous. And, you know, long story short, you know, there, there are different licenses out there. And as I said, I like the GPL license uh, for software over most other licenses. And the GPL was not designed for art, although you can apply it to art. It's not really designed for art. But I think there should be licenses that are very similar. And the Creative Commons is a good example. And there's different aspects in there. And I, I like some of the Creative Commons licenses better than others. And some are GPL compliant and others aren't. Or comp compatible, compliant. I, 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 I don't know. I guess compatible would be a better word there. Um, but I personally don't think that, I, okay, so let me go back. There was a video I did a while ago talking about, you know, a GPL license, which is a distribution license, as opposed to uh, a, a, how do, you, how do people say that? The ELUA, you know, an end user license agreement. So you, you get a copy of Windows or, a, you know, some proprietary software, and before you use it, you have to click I agree to this big long contract, basically. That's different than a GPL, because that is saying, how you can use that software and how you can't use that software, what you can do with it and can't, and you're agreeing to it, and it is illegal. I've, I've heard people say, oh, pfft, you know, you click yes, it doesn't really mean anything. No, you're legally agreeing to that, and really, even if you don't agree to it, you're still legally bound by it. Because if I come and install software on your computer and I click yes, and then you, someone else comes along and uses it, they still have to apply to those, uh, conform to those agreements, even though they didn't click the button, which is very weird. Why is it so important? I click the button. Uh, you know, I guess it's just legal, legal stuff saying, well, they should have known there, there was the, it was in there. A GPL license and a BSD license and an MIT license and an Apache license aren't end user license agreements. They're distribution. My camera just fell off the tripod. <laughs> but we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. They are not end user license agreements. I don't know what is going on. Okay. Okay. My little holder there is falling apart. Um, they are not end user license agreements. They are distribution license. They say, the GPL, you can do whatever you want, whatever you want with that software. What it's talking about is how you distribute it. It's distribute it. So here's a question. Someone um, creates a piece of software, like the Linux kernel, under a GPL license. I take that, and I make modifications to it. Do I have to share those modifications with the world? If you said yes, you are wrong. I do not. I do if I distribute it. If I'm giving a copy of that to someone, even if it's binary copies, I have to also uh, give them the source code and the changes I made. But if I don't give it to somebody, I don't have to, and I'm not a lawyer, but I don't have to give them the changes I make. I can make my own personal changes, keep them in my house. I can, man, Paul, we're going to try to keep going. The little rubber grip on my uh, camera tripod just slipped off, and that's why the camera's slipping out. Anyway. I was on an emotional rant, and now I had to stop. So uh, I was saying, I can, I can take the, the Linux kernel, I can make changes of it as much as I want, 
And I do not have to share that unless I'm giving you a copy. It's about distribution. And I think copyrights really should focus more on that rather than use. Um, because I should be able to listen to whatever I want. Now, if I'm sharing that with somebody, I probably have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, go by some guidelines. But even though the GPL was not designed for art, it was designed for um, software. And as I said, you can use it uh, on arts. It's kind of a gray area there, I think. Um, to have a license similar to that for art would be, be very beneficial. So, first of all, let, let's, let's stop right there and talk about artists making money. Um, something uh, Tom Scott said in his video was just a question, you know, and, and he was trying to, to, at least for the first, uh, you know, two-thirds of that video, talk about facts. These are the laws, not that he agrees with them or whatever, but he points out, he goes, he goes, he go, you know, you taking a picture, taking a picture and uploading it to your website without permission, that, that is against the law if, if you don't have permission to do that. And it's violating copyright laws. And he said, you know, you might feel like it's fair use. Yeah, I'm just putting it up here. I'm not making money off it. I'm just posting it. He, and he says, you know, go to a photographer friend of yours and ask them how much they spend on equipment, how much they spend, uh, you know, uh, taking the pictures and how hard it is and all that stuff. And I, I wrote a comment on there. None of that matters. None of that matters. Most of you, and, and, and some of you may be artists or some other field that's similar to this, but most of us make money in two of main ways. Most of us make our money in one way. We get a job somewhere, we do our work, and we get paid for that work. Someone hired us to do that work, and we get paid for it. Or we create something, uh, you know, some, something physical, and we sell that. And then sometimes it's a little bit of both. You're getting paid for making something, and then they're selling that product. Why can't art be the same way? So we see a lot of people, especially artists, obviously, and they've worked out the copyright laws in their benefit over this theory that if I don't have a copyright and I can't charge people for, for using this music and playing this song, well, then, then I can't make money. My question is, who hired you? Who hired you to write that song? Who hired you to take that picture? Who hired you to make that video? Listen, I don't do it much anymore, but I used to do wedding videos. It was always a side thing for me, but I do a couple a year. And you know what? When I first started out, I, I, I didn't know anything about copyright laws, but yeah, I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I, this is my, uh, my, my work and you got to charge and you know, I got to make you copies. But I only did that for a little bit. Back in high school, uh, I was in uh, JROTC, Junior ROTC. Um, and uh, the last two years I was there, and then I actually went back the two years after that, I did a CD yearbook for that class. I'd go on the trips with them. I'd take pictures and videos, and i put them on a CD, and I am guilty of being young and stupid, and at least one of those years, I had a key that was written on this label of the CD, and you needed that key. It was stupid, because I, I made like three different keys, and then I, you know, so not everyone had the same key, but a lot of the keys worked on different ones, and, and it was stupid. First of all, DRM like that never worked, especially the one I did, because basically the way this worked was I had an application that displayed the images, and basically I had folders of different categories, and I just removed the extension. They were all JPEGs, but they didn't have the JPEG extensions, JPEG extension. So on a Windows machine, if you looked at those folders, they just showed up as miscellaneous files. But if you just added .jpeg, uh, they would they be images. So so the, the the key would just basically allow you to access the next menu in the software. But anyone who copied it to their hard drive and renamed the files could view the files. It was stupid. And it was just stupid that I even tried doing that. And most of the time, you look at stuff like that, companies spend so much time and money trying to put DRM in place, and 99.9% .9 of the time, it doesn't work. You know, it might slow people down, but it also encourages some people. A lot of people who go around breaking DRM do it because it's a challenge, so it, it's completely pointless. But towards the end of doing that, and most of my wedding videos, I go, I film the wedding. I say, I film the wedding, you will get a copy on DVD. If you want me to make extra copies and label them and put them in nice packages and stuff like that, I do it for 20 bucks a copy. But I would tell people, feel free to make as many copies as you want. And even towards the end, uh, I, I would upload the videos to YouTube for them and be like, here, you know, share it, download it. Why wouldn't I want people to share my work? That's just going to get me more business. The thing is, I already made, you know, my $800,000, which is very low for wedding videos. Most of the time I was doing it for, for friends or friends of friends. So... So I would do it for, I think most weddings I did, I did for $800 to $1,000 for six hours worth of work. And I had it down, most of my video editing, I had scripted out. And I could usually edit a wedding video, you know, that was anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on how much happened at the wedding. I'd be able to do that in 24 hours and turn around and spit it out to people. 
um, you know, even before that, probably taking me a week, I've talked to people who, who it takes over a year to get their wedding videos, which is ridiculous. Thing is, I had it down. I knew what I was doing. I would charge you. You want me for six hours? It's $800. You want me for eight, eight hours? It's going to be $1,200 or whatever. I get paid for doing my work. If you want to make copies of it, why do I care? Why would I care? I got paid for doing my work. And all photographers, musicians can be like this. I wrote a song. Did someone pay you to write that song? No? Then you can't complain when people don't pay you for doing it. You can make money by doing live performances. I go to work. I go to work and I, I work 24 hour shifts. You, you know, you, whatever you do, you work at a grocery store, you go to work and you get paid. You don't go to work, you don't get paid. Musicians should be the same way. Well, what about artists with the painting of their, their, their paintings? No one hired you to, to, to paint that, but you can also sell the painting you made. If someone makes a copy, it's not the original. Painting, copies of paintings don't make the money that the originals do. Yeah, you can make money off copies, but what do you care? If no one hired you to do it, you can't complain. I usually use the analogy that I came up with, and people will criticize this analogy, but I think it's a good analogy. You know, you leave your house, you come back, someone mowed your lawn while you were gone. You didn't hire them, but now they're sending you a bill saying, I mowed your lawn. You're enjoying a mowed lawn because of me. You have to pay me. That's basically what artists are doing when they, when they do that. I wrote a song. You're enjoying that song. You have to pay me. I painted this picture. I took this photo. You're looking at that. You have to pay me. You know, and people will criticize my, my, um, my analogy there because they'll be like, oh, well, that's trespassing me. Trespassing. Well, that's a whole nother issue. But let's just say I, 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 mowed, I mowed the lawn at a public park and now I'm sending people bills for walking through the park. Well, you're enjoying the park. I mowed the lawn. You should pay me money. No. If you're an artist, you want to make money, keep making art. Find people who like your work. If I like a musician, I hear their songs, and I'm like, man, I want more music from that guy. You know, I'll send him. You know, if he says, I'm working on a new album, but to do this, I need, uh, you know, to be paid for my time. You know, I need to raise so much money. I'll send him, you know, depending on how much I like the artist, anywhere from $5 to $25. You know, depending on how much I like the, the, the artist, how much I want to hear their music, am I getting a CD or am I getting digital download? But you can make money like that. And the thing is, people say, oh, it's, it's too hard doing, you know, this, this fundraising. It's like, well, it's actually doing work. <laughs> I, I think it's ridiculous that an artist can spend, you know, a couple of weeks writing some songs and then expect to get paid for the next hundred years because again uh, it, you know tom scott talks about this and i i know this i'm not a professional on, on on copyrights but i know a lot about them you know you you create something and it's your life plus 70 years and that's not even getting into trademarks because again you you uh you, you try to make a, a a superman cartoon or draw a picture of superman you know and now you're getting into fair use stuff under certain cases and and fair use is just complete you know bs pardon me but it's bs because because it's all it's all you know a matter of opinion and it may work this time it may not work that time different people argue over what fair use is it's like that should never be your argument you know uh when you're going out to decide to do something but but uh you know basically when it comes down to the whole fair use thing is, is basically are, are you making money off it like you could you can uh i can i walk down the street singing a beatles song yeah i can walk down the street but i record myself doing it and put it up online oh oh now now i can get sued but I, either way i'm doing it the, the same thing so, uh, to, so going back to the, the GPL license, it being a distribution license, I think it should be the same thing. I should be able to, to listen to whatever I want, look at whatever pictures I want, you know, but maybe distributing it, dis distributing it would be the issue, you know? And, uh, and in the Tom Scott's video, he talks about how people are very flip-flop. It's like if, if an individual user uses like a clip from a Marvel movie, that's okay. But if Marvel was to do it the other way around, they would, you would throw a fit. No, I, 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 I think either way. So, so let's say, let's talk about the GPL license versus other licenses like the BSD. Now, this is going to be very controversial, what I'm about to say, although this whole video probably is. I much prefer the GPL license. I think it is a freer license. I think it has less restrictions than the, than the BSD license. And that's where people are going to freak out. No, the BSD is less, less restrictive. Okay, what people say when they mean that, uh, what people mean when they say that is... One of two things. Either they have no clue what they're talking about and they just heard people say that and they don't really understand it. But really what it is, the, the, the main difference between a GPL license and, and there are different BSD licenses, uh, but uh, one of the BSD licenses at least, um, and a lot of these other open source licenses versus free licenses is uh, the, allow, the allowance to, to relicense. So I create something under a BSD license. I put the software under that license. Someone can take that 
and then make some changes and compile up and say, okay, now I'm not sharing the changes. That is restriction. But people will say that's freeing because you're not restricting people from restricting the software, which does not make any sense. So, and why anybody would release any of their software under a BSD license or some sort of license that allows relicensing like that uh, is beyond me. Uh, it, it's either because they're planning on screwing you over later by closing it up, or they just don't understand it and they think that it, it's giving them more freedom because they heard that. But basically, it's just allowing someone else to take what you've created and take it away from you, basically, because now they've made changes to it and, and you don't have access to that. Going back to the GPL license, I create something in GPL license, people can make changes, but now, unless they're keeping it from themselves, if it's out in the world at all, they are required by law to share those changes. And if you do the same thing with your art, think about how great that would be. Marvel's making a big movie. You know, they want to use your song. They can either pay you for a license to use it, or the video they use it in, the movie they use it in, they have to release under the same license, which is completely free. Can you imagine if all the assets for Marvel movies were made public for you to use? But then again, you know, another movie, you know, company wants to use some of those assets. Well, it's under that license. They have to make all of their video free and open, meaning that all their assets, all their sound clips, all the music they use would have to be free and open. And this doesn't have anything. This doesn't stop people from paying for the stuff. I mean, why would it? Because, <laughs> because again, do you want to see another Avengers movie? You're either going to pay for it. Or you're going to download it for free. Why does it matter whether it's, it's, it's free, it, it's, it's open or not? They say, hey, we want to make an Avengers movie. We need a budget, uh, you know, of one billion dollars, whatever it costs to make movies nowadays, at least they claim they make, which also adds into it. It's like they say the movie costs this much. Well, it probably costs half of that if you could use the assets and sounds and music from other projects without paying for them. But that pays back because now all those assets used, those people can use what you create. And we just get my piles and piles and piles of media that everyone can use. And we can all create great things. I mean, think about how you're creating a video. Maybe you're making a movie right now and you want to use a song. And of course, the main, one of the main points of Tom Scott's video uh, was how people complain about the, the YouTube uh, content ID and, and how their copyright things are broke and how really it's not. And I, I, I've, I, I've always kind of agreed with, with basically what he said. It's like YouTube has arranged something so that we can post stuff that has copyrighted material in it. And we, the chances of us getting sued are very, very low uh, because they can go to YouTube and they're like, hey, just give us money or put up an ad and we get the money from that. Uh, and you may not like that, but it's better than them coming and suing you. It's, it's a balance there. Um, Again, what YouTube is doing is not great, but it's working around a broke system, which is basically what a Tom Scott's video is about. Um, but think about the, all these little, you can watch some of these videos on YouTube that, that are almost as good as, as big budget movies, at least in my opinion. Um, and just think about how much better they could be. You know, so, you know some guy on YouTube is making these videos and, and he does, making this great video, but then like, the, the, the models he's using for the 3D stuff just don't look quite right. Well, imagine if he had a bigger selection to choose from. His video would look better. But then everything he creates, someone else can use parts of. And of course, my big thing is credit. Uh, uh, you know, and, and when you come to like the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Creative Commons license, there's different options. Uh, my, uh, my videos, this video is under Creative Commons, share, share alike, meaning you're allowed to share it, but you have to allow people to share uh, and and uh, make changes to to what you're making, um, but attribution attribution is a big thing to me. Um, to me, uh, that should even be re you know um, part of the license. That should just be required by law. I should be able to use whatever I want in my video, but I have to give attribution um, because if not, uh, to me that would fall. My personal opinion would fall under false advertising. If I made a video and I used a song in it that I didn't create and I don't credit somebody, I'm basically stating in so many words that I created this, I wrote this song and I didn't. And if I didn't create that, I think that should fall under false advertising, you know, and, and think of like Millie Vanilli. It's like they lied about them singing. You know, some of the younger guys probably don't know who Millie Vanilli is, but back early nineties, late eighties, uh, somewhere around there, early, early nineties. I think it was, could have been late eighties. I was young. Anyway, 
uh, Blame It on the Rain was their big song. They had a couple of big songs. Turns out these two guys weren't singing the song, and that happens a lot in the music industry. The music videos aren't the people who actually sing the songs. At least it happened back then. Um, and the truth is, if you're saying these people are singing and they're not, I think that's false advertising. You can have them sing, but in the credits should say, singer, voice this, but then visually performed by so-and-so if you want, however, but you need to word it like that. And to me, if you don't do that, that's false advertising, or at the very least, misleading advertising, right? So again, these are topics that a lot of people are going to have opinions on, but I have found, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, most people uh, who argue about copyrights, especially people who argue for copyrights, do not know anything about copyrights, and they just have it in their mind that maybe someday I'll create something, and I'll become a billionaire or a millionaire and uh one uh that that's just a greedy way to think that and that's a whole nother video like people will come up to me and say hey you should make it i have an idea for an app we can make millions yeah you think it's going to be that easy very rarely do you make that type of money without a lot of work um but i'll give you an example i have a buddy of mine i won't say his name but he's a very good friend of mine i don't see him very much he lives in another country now and his side job is a magician he's written a few magic books and Last time he was in the, st in the States, which was a while ago, um, he was having me copy some VHS tapes he had to DVD. And while we were doing it, he was complaining about how uh, the books he wrote, he found them online, that people were pirating them. And I hate that term, pirating. Um, but they, were, they were pirating and making copies. And he's, anyone who copies my book and shares with other people should be thrown in jail. And here I am copying videos to DVD for him. And that's, that's kind of, I don't know the current state of the law on that. That's something that's gone kind of back and forth. I think current law says if you're making copies for yourself uh, to a new type of media or for backup copies, that's allowed. So the fact that he had these VHS and we're copying into DVD because VHS is kind of going out, um, that's kind of, that, that's, that's been a gray area in the past. Meanwhile, his kids were in the living room watching a cartoon that I downloaded off the internet. And I point out to him that they were doing that. And, oh, oh, that's okay. Once something's on TV, that, that's okay because it's already been aired and they've made their money. Well, no, I, I downloaded it from the internet and the commercials are cut out. So the, the people who paid them to post those commercials, I mean, if that's your argument, that's a poor argument. Uh, no, that, that's still, again, you know, you can't say, oh, I think copyright laws are great the way they are, except for all the things I do. And then his wife, uh, was sharing cookbook recipes with my wife. Now, you have a food recipe, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but in general, you can't copyright a food recipe. That is, you know, three cups flour, two cups water, two eggs. But copyright, but when you have a cookbook, they usually have writings, and you know, this is that, and that, and is this, and I used to make this in the summer, and then you can't copy that. And even if I just printed up a page, in my book that just had the list of ingredients and, and what to cook it at, you can't copy that because, again, in Tom Scott's video, he doesn't, makes a great point. There are songs like uh, Canon in D, that's the name of that song, right, that plays at all the weddings. Um, that song is at a copyright. But if you perform it, now you have a copyright on that performance, which is just stupid. I would think you're using this for free. What you create with it should be free as well. Uh, I think it's kind of greedy for you to say, well, well I, I took that and I replayed it. Okay. Anyway. So my buddy's over, we're making copies of VHS tapes to DVD, which is, is legal, at least it is now, I think. Again, that's a law that's changed in the past. Um, watching show cartoons that we downloaded off the internet and photocopying pages from a, a cookbook. But according to him, all three of those are okay. Well, that, that's, that, that, that doesn't count. But if someone copies the magic book he wrote, they should be thrown in jail, according to his words. Now, this guy is a very, very good friend of mine, but screw you, buddy. <laughs> you are just being greedy. And you know what? I think people who think like that should be thrown in jail or at least smacked in the face. And, and, and again, that guy's a really good friend of mine, but I don't care how good a friend you are. If you're being an idiot, you deserve to be smacked in the face. <laughs> oh, no violence on TV or YouTube or whatever this is. Anyway, um, I've talked for a while. This is a passionate topic. I try not to talk too much about it. I try to, to, to encourage open source software and media through my videos by showing people how it works, showing people how to create the stuff and sharing the stuff I create. And I would hope that you would too. So again, kind of a long video. Uh, I do recommend checking out Tom Scott. Just go, just search Tom Scott, um, 
YouTube copyright. Would probably what it would be the video that comes up. It's probably about as long as my video. It's close to a half an hour long, uh, and his is much more informative. Mine is mostly opinions, where his was mostly uh, fact, um, but lots of good examples in there. So, uh, if you've watched this video this long, this is very long for one of my videos. I do appreciate you sticking around. Ooh, my air conditioner is turned off. Is it quieter now? Um, anyway. Thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Check it out. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. And oh, I apologize. I was trying to make a point to look at the camera rather than the screen. Because uh, I noticed in my last two videos, it looked kind of weird that I was looking at the screen. But I think it was because I was closer. See, like this, I'm not looking at you. It's like I'm looking off the side. We're here. If I look at the camera, I'm looking at you. Hopefully, if I'm further back, it's less obvious. I, I apologize if that's weird. Try to stay further back. Have a great day.